The Japanese civilization has at last joined Age of Empires 4. The samurai, the ninjas, the daimyos, everything is there and so much more. And if you, like me, love Japanese culture and history, you're gonna love this video. And without further ado, let's do this. In the game, the Japanese are represented from 794 to the early 17th century. In 794, the Emperor Kamu moved to the capital from present-day Nara to present-day Kyoto. The Japanese society at the time was mostly agricultural and communities lived in villages. In the game, we can see this way of life being represented in Dark Age. The civilization benefits from dual or multi-purpose buildings like the mining camp is actually a blacksmith or their houses which also also act as mills and can be used for a drop off of food. Now these Japanese houses, these farmhouses are called minka and it means house of the people and they were very typical in these villages. These minka houses were residences of these farmers, traders, merchants and were also used to store goods of any kind. Once Japan's capital moved to Heian, later known as Kyoto, Japan enters the Heian period and it was actually quite common to move the capital after the death of an emperor because of the old belief that a place of death is polluted. During this period, um, China was going through lots of political instability in its Tang dynasty and there were many rebellions all over the place. And because of that, Chinese products are, were not being imported as much and people were not doing like missions or just exploration, just, you know, the normal trade and routine with the neighbor country was not happening anymore. And this facilitated the uh, independent growth of the Japanese culture, the Kokufu Bunka. And because of that, this period is regarded as a high point in Japanese culture. And as a matter of fact, it was also during this period that the samurai class as it starts to rose and at some point eventually they take power and start the feudal period in Japan. The samurai is something like a man at arms, the traditional man at arms, it just replaces them. They are heavy melee infantry units, slow, but they have a special ability, I mean it's a passive ability, they can block incoming ranged or melee damage, the first one sporadically. Now the samurai go way back in Japan's history. The word samurai means servant or one who serves. And this term was actually used to refer to any kind of low rank civil servant and not necessarily to a warrior. The samurai at this point in time, they were more like militia or warrior bands. They literally could be farmers that take their guns, their guns, there are no guns, <laughs> that take their weapons and go defend their lands. And these bands, these warrior bands, as I mentioned, like farmers going to the battlefield, they most of the time they were like farmed in case of need and then disbanded so that the man could go back to farming. It's only in the late 10th century that the samurai starts to gain real recognition. And by the 11th century, the samurai were already changing into a group of fighting men. And these groups of fighting men, we can also call them clans. And these men, these bands of warriors, they were bound to their lord by vows of loyalty. Their lord meaning the feudal lord of the area, so the owner of that piece of land where they are fighting. And of course, when you fight for your lord, your lord also rewards you with pieces of land, with more area to farm and more money they would pay for your military services. At this point in time, they started also to wear more customized armors because soldiers, when they are wearing a uniform, you can't recognize really who is who, right? And the samurai, they had this proud to let everyone know who is fighting. So they started to change themselves, their own armor, make their helmets with emblems and symbols and use, you know, bright colors and dye their armor, everything to make them unique and it's also said that when they are about to fight or to charge into the enemy they would scream their surname 
games to make everyone aware who is fighting, who is going for it, who is in the middle of that mess. And one thing that I found interesting, although it makes it really easier to understand to see who is fighting and who is winning, it's also easier to see who is retreating. They would carry their banners and everything with so much pride. So it feels to me that it can give you more recognition if you're doing well, but at the same time it increases the shame if you are not doing well in Battlefield. But anyway, in the game we see that our samurai units in the Dark Ages and Feudal Age, they look different. In the game they are carrying a Jinata, by the way, which was the first type of weapon they used to use before the samurai swords came, you know, in existence. It's only in the Castle Age that you're going to find the upgrade to Odashi, which is the sword of the samurai, and then they look like what we would expect of a, a real samurai. And by the way, the animation of these units in the game is fantastic. So if you're into that, those things, just zoom in and take a look at it, how they jump and, you know, sh slash everything, it's, it's amazing. Now the Japanese, they also have different types of wheelbarrow upgrades and this one can be upgraded three times. It's not just like the wheelbarrow and then you're done, you can upgrade it three times. The first level is called Towara, meaning handcraft. The second level called Takezaiko means bamboo working and that could be some kind of improvement in baskets and you know carrying objects that leads to an upgrade. So I find all these things all make sense, it's super cool. And the last level of this upgrade is called Fudazashi and this is really interesting. Fudazashi means rice brokers and what was that exactly? Rice brokers were merchants that would rent their space to store rice especially for their feudal lords and would tax them and you know ask for some fee to use this storage. And at some point they would even become wealthier than the lord himself, they would organize the transportation distribution of that rice that he's storing for the Lord. So this man had really huge power, especially with this distribution of food. So I feel like this upgrade is kind of that, you know, you're improving your um, storage distribution and everything. So with that in the game, it just the reference is that you have an improvement in gathering as well. Now, as I mentioned before, the Japanese also have access to the blacksmith already from Dark Age. That's because the blacksmith is actually a mining camp or a mining camp that is a blacksmith. You can pick whatever order you want, but it, it's one building for both purposes. And already in Dark Age you have access to an upgrade, which is pretty cool because all the other civilizations they only have access to upgrades from blacksmith in Feudal Age when you have a blacksmith. This upgrade is called Tatara and replaces the Bloomery, you know, that increases the melee attack by one. A Tatara is a traditional Japanese furnace used for smelting iron and steel. And the traditional steel in Japan comes from iron sand and this is processed in a special way, also called Tatara system. Now the second level of this upgrade is called Hizukuri and means shaping into form. And the third level of this upgrade is called Kobuzeki Tai and it's one of the most common methods to make the Japanese swords. And the last upgrade level is called Yaki Ire and means clay tempering. In this process the blade is covered with a thin layer of clay and the split second difference in cooling because of that clay creates uh, two different levels of hardness in that steel. And the boundary between these two layers is commonly seen as a wavy line that goes down the length of the blade. When I saw this, when I read this when doing my research, I was fascinated because I used to watch anime and Samurai X came immediately to my mind. I used to see this wavy detail on the swords in the animation and I thought it was just, you know, an anime thing. But now I know it's real and everything makes sense now. Everything changed for me. I thought it was, I don't know, a reflex or something, but it's not. It's a real thing. It's clay tempering of the blade. How beautiful is that? They added this detail and the noob here had no idea. In any case, we talked about the samurai serving these feudal lords. These lords were actually called daimyos. And these daimyos, or feudal lords, they were the leader of these warrior bands or clans. In the game, you can upgrade your town centers already from Dark Age into daimyo manor, palace and shogunate castle. We are gonna talk about the shogunate in a second. And by upgrading your TC, you get a spot for a bannerman and you can produce bannermen from barracks, archery, ranch and stables. And each of them is 
going to give specific bonus for their specific units. So if you make a bannerman in the stables, you're gonna have a cavalry unit that gives bonus to other cavalry units. If you have a bannerman from the barracks, it's gonna give some bonus to your barrack units and so on and so forth. By the late 11th century, the Minamoto clan was recognized as the most powerful clan in the north and eastern of Japan. Now it's important to think about in this time, Japan was split by feudal lords, right? All the lands were like in small pieces and each area had their daimyos, their feudal lords, controlling their region. Of course, there's conflict. They were fighting all the time. There were some alliances, but everyone was fighting for power. Who is the strongest one? And unification was not on the table yet. It, this was just chaos. I think a lot of countries at the time were like that. They were just broken into pieces, controlled by different lords. However, there was also an emperor taking care of the whole um, land, the, the whole country, that they should report to. Okay, with that, the two most powerful clans at the time, Tara and Minamoto, they get drawn into politics and they start fighting each other. But Minamoto was successful in defeating the Tara and they asserted their dominance. And with that, as the most powerful clan that defeated the second most powerful clan, they started a warrior government. They established their stronghold at Kamakura and the leader Minamoto Yoritomo was appointed shogun by the emperor. And shogun means great barbarian subduing general. And the emperor established that all the other daimyo should report to the Minamoto or shogun. This period in Japan's history is called Kamakura period and lasts from 1185 to 1333. And in the game this is represented with the transition to the feudal age. It it was in the Kamakura period with the ascension of the samurai that martial arts and styles start to be classified and defined. However, the origin of ninjutsu is, is still a mystery. Ninjutsu is the martial art of the ninja or shinobi. There are reports of spying operations in Japan already in the 7th century, but it was only during the 14th century that the shinobi start to gain some notoriety and start to be mentioned in manuscripts. The shinobi were assassins, scouts and spies hired mostly by daimyos for espionage and deception. And the shinobi, they would mostly come from Koka, located in the ancient Omi province. And Koka nowadays is known as the ninja village and it's open for visitors. Now talking about shinobis, one of the landmarks you can build to go to the feudal age is exactly that, the Koka township. And this landmark allows you to produce the new and unique unit, the shinobi. These units can be used for espionage and sabotage, they can disguise themselves as villagers from your opponent, so they dress up differently, they show on the map as your opponent's color even, and a move, attack move, doesn't work on them, so they are really disguised. You can sneak in, get you know near some other villagers, act as if you are a villager, and sabotage buildings, damaging, put it, setting it on fire, and and halting production for 30 seconds. But once you do that, the mask comes off, so you have to get out of there. And you can, by the blink of an eye, with a smoke bomb, you just teleport to a nearby location and you can run for your life. These units are hard to use, but one thing is for sure, they are fun. The other landmark is the Kura Storehouse. Kura means storehouse. So there we go. Actually, the name of this landmark is Storehouse Storehouse. Kura are traditional Japanese storehouses used to store grain or rice. During this period, the government used to tax the country in rice and these Kura storehouses, they were used to store the rice. It's something like the farmhouse, but you know, bigger. However, there's also a plus. These houses, the Kura, were also used to store precious items. Now, in feudal age, you can also start producing the Onabugeisha unit from your barracks. These are light and fast melee infantry units with a massive range. These warrior women were part of a noble class of feudal samurai that were allowed to, you know, supervise their lands. These women were trained in combat and how to use weapons, such as the Najinata, which is the weapon that the unit is carrying in the game. This woman played a very important role in the transition to the Tamakura period, and they were mentioned in the tale of the Heike as strong and beautiful warriors. 
Warriors. And in this tale, Tomoe Gozen is mentioned as one of the allies of the Minamoto clan. These Najinata blades, they were long and, you know, they had great range, which helped to compensate the strength and body size of their male opponents. And actually, in general, throughout the centuries in Japan, women were really present in the battlefield. The Kamakura shogunate was overthrown in 1333 and succeeded by the Ashikaga based in Muromachi near Kyoto. And just like in the Kamakura period, the other daimyos they would support the Ashikaga, administering distant lands, distant districts. During this period, some of Japan's most representative art forms developed, like ink wash painting, ikebana flower arrangement, the tea ceremony, the bonsai, not here theater, calligraphy, and so on. There was a great cultural growth in the country happening at the time, particularly under the influence of Zen Buddhism. And this moment in time is represented in the game with the transition to the Castle Age. And one of the landmarks you can build to go to the Castle Age is the Floating Gate. This landmark unlocks Shinto priests and gives you Yorishiro relics that respawn every 4 minutes. These relics can then be placed in buildings to generate passive income or increase the building's health points depending, you know, on the building. The Itsukushima Shrine is a Shinto shrine on the island of Tsukushima, known for its floating Tori gate. During the Muromachi period, the island of Tsukushima grew in economic importance, as it was a very important point for trade and transportation in the Seto Inland Sea. With that, the market starts to grow and the city area also starts to develop. And most importantly, during the Muromachi period, there was a renewed interest in the Shinto, a type of animalistic religion revolving around supernatural entities called Kami. Say hi. Hi. And the other landmark you can build is the Temple of Equality. Now, this landmark, on the other hand, unlocks Buddhist monks instead of the Shinto priests. These units are cheaper, can decrease an opponent's unit's damage by 50% and increase nearby friendly unit's damage by 20%. And regardless of the landmark you choose, once you build monasteries, you can also produce the same type of monk or priest out of the monastery. Now, this landmark is based on the Buddhist Temple of Equality, located in the city of Uji in Kyoto. Built originally in the 10th century as a villa, it was made into a Buddhist temple five years later. Now that you are in Castle Age, you can finally upgrade your samurai with the Odashi and look at them. Now they look like the typical samurai as we know them. In Castle Age, you can also start producing the mounted samurai, which is like a, like a knight. It's a heavy melee cavalry unit, but they also have this deflective armor, meaning like the samurai, they can block sporadically, they can block melee or ranged attack, and this, it's just like nothing happened. They just ignore the damage. Another unit available in Castle Age is the Onamusha. These female units are fast-ranged cavalry units with long range and they are super effective against heavy units, meaning, yes, they are crossbows, they are cavalry units with crossbows. Now, the Onamusha and Onabugeisha, they are actually very similar, they are still actually the same, it's the, the warrior woman. But Onabugeisha refers to the defensive woman warrior fighters and the Onamusha refers to the offensive. During the second half of the 16th century, an important figure starts to emerge, the daimyo of the Oda clan, Oda Nobunaga. In the 1560s, Nobunaga launched war against other daimyos. Remember what I said in the beginning, that this was like a fight for power, right? So the daimyos and they would fight each other for dominance from our lands and so on. So that's what Oda did. He launched war on other daimyos to assert his dominance, his power. And by winning all of his fights, he gradually unified all of those other lands from other daimyos. And eventually, he even overthrew the Muromachi shogunate. Unfortunately, Nobunaga died before the unification process was completed, but he is known as one of the greatest unifiers of Japan until today. Oda died in 1582 in an ambush, and he was forced to commit seppuku. He was succeeded by Hideyoshi, that along with Tokugawa Ieyasu, completed Oda's unification a few years later. And not long after, Hideyoshi died 
died in 1598 in the middle of a war with China and Korea. And Tokugawa saw this as an opportunity and he took it. Tokugawa killed all the remaining allies and supporters of Hideyoshi and asserted his dominance over Japan. And this starts the Edo period in Japan with the Tokugawa shogunate. And this, my friends, is in the game the Imperial Age. The Castle of the Crow is one of the landmarks you can build to go to the Imperial Age. This landmark acts as a castle that periodically spawns treasure caravans from a neutral market selected. And these caravans provide a huge amount of resources once it reaches the castle. All you have to do is make sure that, you know, the caravan stays alive. This landmark is based on the Matsumoto Castle, also known as the Crow Castle because of its black exterior. Listed as a national treasure of Japan, this keep's construction was completed in the late 16th century and was used as the seat of the Matsumoto domain during the Edo period. And the other landmark you can go for is the Tanegashima Gunsmith. This landmark stockpiles supplies every 30 seconds that can be used to instantly produce gunpowder units and it can produce Uzutsu, a new unique heavy gunpowder infantry with siege damage. And also you can make Rebaldikins from it. In 1543, a Chinese junk with two Portuguese explorers on board anchored at Tanegashima because of a storm. The Japanese purchased from the Portuguese two muskets that had this matchlock mechanism. And they put a swordsmith to start working on copying that mechanism. So this landmark would be like the, you know, workspace of this swordsmith. In any case, you can also make Ozutsu units from this landmark. And the Ozutsu was an artillery used in the early Edo period in Japan. And was very effective in destroying large enemy buildings and structures. And finally, what comes with finally? What rhymes with finally? The Wonder. The Japanese civilization Wonder is the Tokugawa Shrine. Its real-life counterpart is the Nikko Toshogu Shinto Shrine. It was constructed in 1617 and dedicated to Tokugawa Ieyasu. Tokugawa's remains are also buried there. And during the Edo period, the Tokugawa Shogunate carried processions from Edo to the shrine. And the annual spring and autumn festivals nowadays reenact these occasions. The roadway to the the shrine is lined with cedar trees and is called the Cedar Avenue of Nikko. Isn't this just beautiful? So we play the rest of the game in the Edo period, also called Tokugawa period. This period is characterized by economic growth, social order, arts, peace, but at the same time they were isolated from foreign and western ideas. They were like their own bubble. This period is also referred to as Oo Edo or Great Edo. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to say, Edo is modern day Tokyo. That's what it means, that's what it, where it is. And the Edo period ends in 1868 with the Meiji Restoration that reinstitutes the emperor with power and opens the country to western ideas and production. But that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. It was super fun doing research for this civilization please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it i hope you did because i put a lot of passion in this one i love japan i love their culture i just wanted to give my best try to explain with simple words and i hope it worked i hope you enjoyed i hope you had a good time please consider subscribing to the channel if you liked it to support me and to you know keep track of new videos and i hope to see you guys in the next one bye